I'm really excited to be here, extremely excited. We came all the way from Jackson, Michigan here to, to come to Philly for the first time, and uh, this is an amazing event, and I'm really stoked. Um, I don't know if you guys have looked at the schedule or not, uh, but this, this event is packed. There's some really, really, really cool stuff coming up. We're just getting started and barely scratching the surface. And there's one thing I wanted to highlight, one thing on the schedule, I don't know if you guys noticed it, but just coming up pretty soon, um, we've got lunch. <laughs> lunch is coming up. So that's a, that's a big highlight on the schedule. Um, and uh, I, I think actually lunch is being brought in, but I'm also told that there's like a lot of really, really amazing places to eat here in this town. This is, this is what people tell me, and uh, I'm kind of excited about that. And so for those of you going out to eat, this is like the perfect opportunity for you to kind of do your little research and choose the right place for you to go to eat. You know, when you're in a new city, you gotta find the right place, and that's kind of a challenging decision to go to uh, some place you've never been before and evaluate whether it's got the food that will be good and the service is good and quick and it's close proximity to the event and, um, and the price is right for you and all these kinds of things. And I think that evaluating a restaurant is, is a lot like evaluating a CMS. <laughs> and, and WordPress has a lot in common with restaurants, I think. If you ask me, if you think about it. There are a lot of factors um, besides the core factor. Right? Each, each of these things have a, have a core, one thing at their core, one fundamental factor which people use them for. And in the case of a restaurant, that would be the food. We wouldn't go to a restaurant typically if we didn't need to eat, and we all do. And everyone needs a website, we all do. And we need something to power it. So in the case of a CMS, it's that core software that's powering it. But we must recognize that a lot goes into that decision-making process besides just that core factor. There's more than just the food, there's more than just the core software. So, uh, many of you may, rec may know already that there are teams of people who contribute to WordPress in different ways. There are 14 teams, in fact, all responsible for different aspects of the WordPress community. And so, for those of us who care about WordPress and where it's going, it's important that we think holistically and understand and acknowledge that users are not choosing WordPress and sticking to it just because of the quality of the core software, which none of us would dispute, is of the highest quality. It's fantastic. But uh, there's a lot more than just the core software. WordPress, um, the entire experience of WordPress really matters. So this is to those who are um, concerned and interested in furthering WordPress and want it to grow, um, it's important that we recognize that there's so much more than just the core software. That's why there's these 14 teams. So that brings us to the topic at hand, which is the meta team. What is the meta team? The meta team is responsible for the tools and sites that power the WordPress project. You may recognize many of them here in front of you. These are just a few that fall under the meta team's responsibility. We have WordPress.org and WordCamp Central. Um, the make blogs, every community team has their own blog. Uh, and we have uh, many other sites for the WordPress app and for translating WordPress, or for BuddyPress and BBPress and WordPress jobs. And one of my favorite sites on the internet, WordPress.tv, where sessions just like this and every other session will be recorded and published for everyone to view for free forever. So all of these sites are very important to the WordPress community, to this project. and. Uh, if, if we were to continue with maybe our restaurant analogy, we could consider the meta team as maybe those responsible for maybe the facilities and decor and infrastructure that in a restaurant setting would make it possible for you to sit and comfortably enjoy your meal. Maybe we could even say that WordPress without the meta team would be the equivalent of going to a, maybe an empty parking lot and having someone hand you a filet mignon um, <laughs> without, a, without a plate or table or silverware or walls or music or anything. So it's... WordPress um, without Meta is, is, uh, is not WordPress. So this is just, just to say that it's very important that we think about the entire experience and now understand that when we're contributing, there's so much more than just the core software. So I'm a fairly new contributor to the Meta team, but I already really love being a part of it. There's a lot of reasons that I really enjoy it, and I believe that contributing to WordPress is a very valuable and worthwhile um, endeavor, and there's a lot of different ways that I have um, contributed and uh, different ways that I have attempted to contribute. Um, I've given many 
um, talks at WordCamps and organized many events around WordPress. And I've um, made attempts at contributing in different ways with code and contributing documentation and all sorts of different things. Um, but the meta team has always stood out to me as something very special. There's a few reasons why I really, really like it. Um, one of the first is that I believe that it's very easy to get involved. There are a lot of other um, ways to contribute, but uh, the meta team has a lot of work to do. There are a lot of sites that are very important to the community, and there are very few people responsible for maintaining them. Um, and uh, they're very great people who are extremely helpful at teaching and uh, getting you set up if you want to get involved and help make these sites better. Um, another reason that I really, really love it that's very valuable to me is I think it's easy to get work done. This is extremely important to me because I'm volunteering my time, setting aside time away from my family and my day job, um, and I think this is very worthwhile. Um, but when I do, I want to actually accomplish something. And I'm sure there's many of you who feel similar to me, similarly to me who have at one time or another had an experience like um, setting aside a block of time to contribute in some way and working very hard to, uh, to contribute during that time. And maybe it could be just answering some questions on a support forum or writing documentation or writing some code. But by the time you get to the end of your time, um, you've only barely gotten enough information to contribute in some way. Maybe um, by the time my time is up, I only just have enough information to barely answer a complicated support forum thread, or I barely understand a feature enough to write documentation about it, or I barely have enough code to submit a working patch, and either I'm out of time and can't work anymore, or someone has come in and solved it before I got there. This happens a lot in the community. There are a lot of people trying to uh, contribute in different ways, but um, the, meta, the work for the meta team has been very interesting to me, and it's very easy for me to set aside little blocks of time and uh, contribute in a lot of ways that have an impact. And really, that's, that's the biggest for me, is that I found it to be very easy to actually make a difference. The sites that um, the meta team is responsible for are extremely important to the project. And there are a lot of simple ways that they can be improved. There are so many people who use these sites every day. And really, this is the ultimate thing that I want to do. I want to have this feeling that I actually made some difference with the little bit of time I have to contribute at the end of the day. So if you want to get involved, here's where you want to get started. Um, the first place to go is going to be the Make blog. Every community team, the 14 that I mentioned, all have their own Make blog. Um, the one you're looking for here is make.wordpress.org slash meta. And this is where you can read the handbook, um, view open discussions, and engage in those discussions, subscribe to updates, and generally learn all there is to know about the meta team. Um, and also, if you're not in WordPress Slack, um, put your Slack in and get in there and uh, join the meta channel as well. There's, uh, that's a place where uh, discussions are held on an almost daily basis about uh, issues and initiatives for the, for the team. Um, and at the heart of meta is track. Um, with WordPress core, if you're not aware, there's an open ticket system where um, bugs and enhancements and issues are uh, recorded, discussed, and addressed for the core software. And similarly with meta, there's a separate track um, that lists anything that needs doing. And so as an il illustration of how track works, I'm going to walk you through my first ever official contribution. How's that sound? <laughs> Woo! OK, so earlier this year, a user known as Arconesis identified on the WordPress.tv website that a Unicode character in every post excerpt was broken. And he attached this screenshot. Another member of the meta team acknowledged the ticket and gave it a good first bug tag. This is a tag used in both meta and core. Uh, to identify tickets that are somewhat easier to address and therefore make great opportunities for new contributors to get involved. And so I had never made a contribution uh, at the time that I discovered this ticket, and it looked fairly straightforward. And so I set about to resolve it. And so after a little bit of help with, from another member of the team, getting an environment set up where I could view the code and um, generate a patch file and, uh, and make my contribution, um, I finally dug into the WordPress.tv themes code and found a place where this broken Unicode character existed. And then eventually identified a solution, and it was quite a doozy. To properly resolve this issue, I had to, you ready for this? I had to type out an entire semicolon. <laughs> That's right. That's right. 
I'm sure you guys can only imagine how much coffee I had to consume and high energy background music I had to play. We're talking straight up Slayer and Dragon Force stuff here to get this, this uh, highly sophisticated programming task done. And you didn't know I was such a good programmer, but now you know. And so this was my first ever contribution. And uh, apart from the satisfaction that I got from knowing that I had used my skills to make the viewing experience on this site so much better for countless current and future visitors, I also got this neat little badge automatically on my WordPress profile as soon as the code I contributed was committed by a team leader and my username was mentioned. How neat is that? And for developers out there, there's a really great GitHub repository that you need to know about and check out. For anybody familiar with using VVV for local development, there's a meta environment that exists um, that allows you to run local versions of all of the meta sites, or virtually all of them, so that contributing really becomes a snap. And if you're interested in learning more about contributing to the meta team, I would love it if you would take some time to talk with me or some of the other representatives from the team here today. There's a lot of work that needs doing, and we're really, really interested in finding more people who can help resolve tickets or help discuss issues and help uh, find bugs in the sites and generally make the viewing experience better for the entire community. And also, I would encourage anybody who is going to be here on Sunday to find the members of the meta team who will be there getting work done and sit down with them and they'll walk you through the steps to set up an environment or do whatever it is to get things done and help uh, move the community forward. So thank you very much all for your time. <laughs>